can't complain too much because some people are born with serious brain defects because of the same condition. I just wish I would have had the proper medical follow-up after this because the truth was always hidden from me. What's up folks, it's Uranus, we're in Brussels, welcome back to another video. So for the past two and a half years, I've been sharing a lot of my personal medical journey with you guys on YouTube. We've talked a lot about my medically induced puberty that happened more than 10 years after regular folks. We've talked about my TRT, my HCG, my personal experience with growth hormone, with peptides, with SARMs and so on. As you know, I will be on medication for the rest of my life. Even in 30 or 40 fucking years, I will still be pinning things in my ass and swallowing pills. I actually should have been on medication during my teenage years, but that never happened and it took its toll on my life. To be honest with you guys, my life actually took a different tra trajectory because of these issues and what I want to talk about to you to you guys exactly today is what is the cause of these issues what is the root cause because as you already know my pituitary gland doesn't function properly and so it never activated my testicles and I never produce any testosterone but why is this because I've done all genetical tests they all came back clean I don't have Kalman syndrome I did an MRI it came back clean and I have two brothers that have perfectly functioning brains and balls well most of the time exactly so what the fuck happened and why did it happen? That's what we're talking about today. All right, c'est parti. So first of all, none of this is medical advice. It's pretty much actually the opposite of that. So 35 years ago, my mom decided it would be a great idea to give birth at home. She was on her second kid already and she thought, yeah, home sweet home will do it for me and my father went with it now of course as you can imagine there was a nurse at home to guide the process but the thing is apparently i was playing a lot with the cables down there rather in there and the cables the cords were stuck around my neck it's a condition called nuchal cords it's actually quite common but it can be potentially dangerous for babies because the cord is necessary for oxygenation for flesh for fresh blood flow supply and for nutrients towards the baby. So of course, if that is compressed, potential brain damage can occur. Now, normally you're supposed to detect this before birth with an ultrasound so you can do the follow-up. And during birth, you're supposed to follow the baby's heart rate to see if there are any abnormalities or to see if the kid is under stress. stress. Now, of course, we're talking about the 80s here. None of that probably happened. Also, well, when you have a condition of nuchal cord, it's best to give birth in a freaking hospital because you can prepare for an emergency C-section. Things that cannot happen if you're in your own freaking bathroom at home. She went into labor and as you can imagine, it was a real mess. A mess that could have easily been avoided. I was really stuck with the cables. It took way too much time. The gynecologist or the nurse that was there was way over her head and eventually they had to pull me out by brute force. It took a long, long time before I eventually showed any signs of life, but then I did. Now, in the end, because of the compression and because of the lack in oxygen, I sustained some brain damage. Now, it is not on the level of the pituitary gland. My pituitary gland is completely fine. It is actually higher up. The damage occurred in the hypothalamus and hypothalamus, and it's actually that fucker that controls the pituitary gland. I got it confirmed through an MRI that my pituitary gland is fine. It, however, never received any GnRH from the hypothalamus. GnRH stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone. That is actually the one that is going to stimulate your pituitary gland to release LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormones. Those, those two signals are sent to your testicles and that's how you produce testosterone and sperm. That never happened and that's how I, I ended up looking like this at 25 years old. On top of that, since they had to remove me from down there through brute force, they actually broke my collarbone, so I was born with those issues too. Now, of course, on the long term, those consequences aren't that bad. So now you know, the root cause of all of my medical issues is simply because of mismanagement before birth. Now, the thing is, these things will happen. Shit will always happen somewhere in life and i am who i am today and i can't complain too much because some people are born with serious brain defects because of the same 
condition. I just wish I would have had the proper medical follow-up after this because the truth was always hidden from me. They had to see a pediatric doctor, of course, because of the traumatic birth and because of the broken collarbone. And the doctor warned my parents that potential brain damage might have occurred. Now, of course, at that age, it's really difficult to quantify the extent of what would have happened. But I should have been medically supervised from that age on and they should have kept an eye on this. Up until my teenage years, I was developing totally normally like any other 90s kid. But once I hit the teenage years, like 14, 15, that's where problems started to occur. And instead of transforming into a man, I was just getting sick. And I wish I would have known sooner so I could have taken great care of myself and I didn't have to go through all the shit I went through. But in the end, it made me who I am today and I am stronger because of it. The truth in my family was always omitted from me. And so when I was 25 years old and I started, I finally started taking care of my shit and I saw more doctors in one month than I had seen in the 25 years prior to that, I started to ask questions because I had done all of the genetical tests that were negative. I had done an MRI. I had seen a multitude of specialists and none of them could explain why my body never produced any LH or FSH. Now, on top of that, I had two brothers that have functioning bodies. So I started asking questions in the family. I confronted my mom, I confronted my dad, and then I finally had the truth. Something wrong had happened at birth. I just wish they would have told me in my teenage years so I could have had the proper medical follow-up. So the moral of the story, if you are going to give life to another human being, please do it at the freaking hospital. It's quite funny because the endocrinologist I'm seeing right now actually figured this, this out before I ever talked about it to her. I had been her patient already for a year or two and seeing my blood work at one point she asked me did something happen during your childhood when you were a small kid or did something happen at birth and then I finally told her what I had learned from my parents yeah, a couple of decades too late now i share this because i want to help as much people as i can we use the past to make tomorrow stronger right all right guys thank you for watching don't hesitate if you have any questions put it in the comment section i will try to answer to any of them kindly do the youtube things like subscribe to my channel and i will catch you on the next one uranus out